welcome to episode seven of Personalized Learning Nuggets of Knowledge. I'm Heather Hurley and I'm the supervisor of personalized learning for Arlington Public Schools. And today I'm going to talk about uh, Flipgrid Discovery Library. Most folks are familiar with Flipgrid, um, but I wanted to talk about the library that is there of already created content. And I wanted to highlight this library for four specific reasons. One, that Flipgrid overall allows for student voice. So not only are students having input into um, lessons, that is one form of student voice, but actually listening and hearing from students about their opinions on a particular topic um, and to allow for some students who maybe are more comfortable speaking than they are writing. So that's one reason I wanted to highlight it. Another is that uh, especially right now, anything that, uh, any tool we can find, anything, uh, content that we can find that will help save teachers time is a great one. So having these already curated uh, collections of content will help save teachers time. And then uh, it's a good way, using Flipgrid is a good way to connect our students that are in person with our students that are virtual. So many of um, our schools, uh, and districts and such are doing a combination of virtual and in person. And one of the big things that always comes up is about how do you create community when you have your students split into two different instructional environments. So this is a great way to be able to pull students together so that they can see one another um, and it doesn't have to just take place in a synchronous environment. It can take place asynchronously as well. And then finally, these resources that I'll show you all have come from very reputable uh, organizations so that you know that the videos that are used and the questions and the content that is created is coming from reputable and research-based areas. So let's hop on over to Flipgrid and I'm gonna show you uh, some of the Discovery Library. So here we are in the Flipgrid Discovery Library. I've logged into Flipgrid and along the top, I've chosen Discovery. And as you can see here, there are over 33,000 topics that have been created by the Flipgrid community um, to be able to jumpstart discussions. So you yourself can actually submit one if you want, if you've created something for your class and you feel that you want others to use it, you can submit one as well. But I want to show you is that you can see that there are all these different uh, collections there is a topic of a day, the wonder of the day. I'm gonna move myself up here. Um, and then these are all the different partners that they have partnered with. So you can see Roll Doll, Scholastic, uh, Minecraft. There's lots of great content in here. So if you have time, I would highly suggest that you kind of poke through and see all of the great uh, content that's here. Then they have trending topics. Um, things that based on what you search for, uh, there are going to be some suggestions for them. Uh, but this is the part that I want to really uh, highlight are the featured collections. And these are collections that are curated by Flipgrid uh, staff. So you can see there is a celebrating uh, Black History Month, celebrations. And as I continue scrolling over, um, there's this one about conversations about race, equity, and justice. Uh, so there's a lot of good topics uh, that are in there that you can use to jumpstart. Uh, I'm going to use the conversation starters just to show you as an example, because we think about as you, if you're just starting to go back to in-person, um, a virtual, or if it's a new term, you, want, you may want to uh, start off as a way for students to introduce themselves to one another. Um, also, when you are when you have some students online and some students in person, generally there can be maybe staggered starts. Students are, are kind of trickling into the classroom, and what are students who are online doing and wait while they're waiting for all the other students in person to come in? Something like a Flipgrid conversation starter activity is a great thing that you could use as a bell ringer, as that warm up activity, so that everyone, when they know that when they come into the classroom or log on to their computer, they know to go and click on the link and do this particular Flipgrid activity. So I thought this would be a good one to, uh, to show. Uh, so you can see here, this particular one, it's done by the Flipgrid team. There are 22 topics. And as you go through, you'll be able to see who the creator was. You'll be able to see the title, 
the subject and the audience. So if you're elementary, middle, or if it's all, or even if it's an adult, um, you'll see the engagement time. And I really like looking at the used because I think that gives you a really good indication of how many, of how popular something is based on how much it's been used. Um, like any resource, you obviously want to vet it before you before you use it. But I'm going to uh, scroll down because there was one that really uh, resonated with me. And this was the guess who, especially as a nice intro um, activity. You can see this has over 8,000 uh, uh, uses. And I'm going to uh, click on the guess who. And this is what it looks like when it opens. So you're going to have what students are going to do. And then these are the integration notes. So the students don't see these, but you do so that you can read um, how um, it could be instructions on how to use a particular filter. It might be different uh, ways to differentiate, uh, but basically it's whoever the creator was, it's notes uh, for you as the teacher uh, to be able to uh, use it. So at this point you could share the topic, which is sharing to Twitter or Facebook. You could save it to a collection. So if you've set up collections and you want to save it for later, you can save it there. Um, or you can add the topic uh, directly to um, your Flipgrid so that you can then use it with students. So let's click add the topic. And if you had a group, um, you would be able to add it to a particular group. I'm going to add it as an individual. Um, maybe you have a group that is conversation starters or bell ringers, so maybe you then want to add it to that group. But I'm going to do it as an individual topic. And when I click Next, it's going to pull it up in, if you've created a Flipgrid before, in a very familiar screen. So even if you needed to change the title that you could, if you wanted to kind of tweak the directions, add to it, this makes it all completely editable. Um, you can see there's media here, so you could add uh, different media. Uh, you can decide how it's going to be uh, sent. So if it's private, you're sending it directly. If your students had email, you could send it to the email and or if it's public, you would click that and get the link um, to be able to share it directly. If say you're doing it in Canvas, um, if you're not using the integration, um, if you're using the Canvas integration, then it's going to be right there in your in your course. Um, or if you're putting it on a playlist or a Google uh, Doc or Google Classroom, Seesaw, all of these things, um, you would be able to get that public link. Here you can choose if you want the topic to be moderated, how you want comments, the closed captioning. You can change the recording time. So if you know you're going to have like 25 students um, and thinking about what it is you're asking them, you might want to change that recording time to longer. I always opt for it to be longer because not everyone is comfortable with recording themselves on screen and sometimes it takes folks a little time to kind of warm up. So I, and you can kind of get stressed out by that shorter amount of time. So even if you have it set for five minutes and someone only takes a minute, that that's completely fine. Say afterwards you wanted a link that you they finished this and you want them to go directly to something, you could put in uh, the link right there so it would be built in. And then just your uh, various, the topic status is active, uh, notifications. Um, would you uh, want students to be able to download uh, their video and share their video? Um, students can trim, just all of these little different um, uh, features that you can decide whether you want your students to um, have access to. The sticky notes are allowing to add those fun like the little hat, the little, little emojis uh, type of things. So once you have all of that set, you would just click update the topic. And um, whoop, I didn't finish, I didn't add something. I needed to do it, uh, there we go. Needed to change it because I didn't put it in a way. And there, uh, and there it is. And I have my topic, there's the join code that I could put in. There is the share, so there's the link um, that I want. I could embed it, um, all of those different uh, areas, and it would be uh, ready to go for students. So I just wanted to show you this because you don't, sometimes it's hard to think about uh, topics to come up with or how you may want to use Flipgrid, and this is a good way to see the different ways to be able to use Flipgrid um, and also save you some time um, in coming up and starting completely from scratch. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be back next week with another video.